Hello everyone, this is Join the Light Side TV with your host Michael. I apologize for my absence as of late. Uh, life has been very busy and <laughs> uh, between school and sort of managing a household here and I also just had my birthday earlier this week so I was celebrating that and doing a little bit of recovery and now uh, <laughs> next week I'm going to be resuming my uh, workouts and sort of uh, the meditation that comes along with after my workouts. I've uh, sort of put that on pause for the time being uh, just in an effort to uh, recover sort of my diet as <laughs> when I have a day or two of indulging it takes me a little bit before I uh, readjust back to um, healthy levels. So uh, that was not really the purpose of this chat today. Um, if you were here for my last episode I was uh, commenting about how I wanted to do an episode that would be featuring on sort of highlighting uh, features of socialism and communism. And so I'd like to pose a couple of questions, at least throughout the episode. So this is where the first uh, question will be coming in. So my question to you is growing up in either the um, pre-secondary era or in your post-secondary studies, did you ever really encounter any education on sort of the transgressions of socialism and communism? And to what uh, extent did you receive this education if you did? If you could uh, leave your comments down below so we can sort of uh, gain a form of consensus on how this, this has come about. Um, I'd be very interested to know and I'm sure others uh, will be interested to read your experience as well. So in my uh, reaction to that question, unfortunately, I did not receive any sort of education on that front. I actually mostly self-taught on that regard. I think I received very brief teachings about it in high school but it did not go into any sort of detail about uh, the account of the Chinese Cultural Revolution. I think it really glossed over it, which is horrendous to say the least. Like, if you're going to bring up something like that, I don't think that just sort of bringing it up as a <laughs> passing remark is exactly doing it any justice. If anything, it's almost uh, implicitly saying that like this wasn't that big of a deal let's move on so there is uh an amalgam of uh socialist and communist based tragedies that have happened over the decades and i think that for uh the layman they see these events and they're almost in a state of mystification as, as in like how in the world did these things happen? Now, I have partial responses to that, which are long-winded, um, and maybe we'll get into the weeds of that um, during uh, this episode uh, to an extent. But just a full disclaimer, I am not a historian. I am not uh, sort of qualified in that regard, but I do know how to use a search engine and I, the research is out there. So it is um, possible to have a fairly accurate telling of these events. So s there is um, a list of, uh, of these socialist and communist based tragedies that I would like to start off with. And if you would like to pause and then be able to uh, look at sort of this material for yourself, I will be leaving uh, a breadth of material to sort of for you to explore this on your own, if you will. I will be doing sort of a brush over um, of what went on. And I hope not to take too much time on that because that's not really the purpose of this episode. 
So some of these events were um, in Cambodia uh, during the uh, 70s, I believe, um, which I will put a correction for that if that is not right. Um, that is the uh, implementation of the sort of red takeover that went through that area with uh, Pol Pot. Uh, that was the Colmar Rouge um, communist takeover of the governmental system. And he wanted to do a accelerated version of Mao's cultural revolution and sort of the process of which the Soviet Union um, did uh, during their communist takeover. Um, so in him trying to accelerate uh, the process of transformation, uh, which they called year zero, um, there is almost an obsession with some of the uh, communist based revolutions where they almost want to try and start anew. Um, and this is sort of the uh, manifestation of which it happened in this event. Um, in them trying to go agrarian, which um, often these communist-based societies do, in order to um, make themselves self-sufficient. Uh, they had a hyper-productivity uh, put into that sort of work, um, at least you know, it was an attempt to be hyper-productive. It was forced labor um, to the point of which the guards would be telling uh, the field workers, like, you will work, and you will work till you die. Like, it was really that terrible. Um, and anybody who didn't go along with it, or if they suspected to be a person that was uh, capable of treason, which was literally everybody like that was even um some people within the military itself nobody was safe um people were deemed a defector left and right um that's when there was the implementation of these mass prisons um i think there was over a hundred all over cambodia and basically they people were taken there interrogated, tortured, and killed. Um, there was also an area which was concentrated with um, taking bodies to, and that was known as the killing fields. Um, so that's a brief rundown of one uh, communist-based tragedy. Um, there's also, uh, this is not a, in chronological order, I apologize. Um, I have a lot of notes about this material, and... Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of work. Um, so the next mention is uh, uh, the Soviet Union. Um, there's a lot of uh, to unpack here to which I'm not going to be going into mass detail as I stated before, but I'm just going to give a brief rundown of some of the things that happened uh, with that. So there was the uh, Homodor, which was, uh, mm -hmm. as people have come to know, with um, the bread lineups in communist-based societies, um, there is usually a mass starvation which occurs because it's supposed to implement um, like a reconfiguration of the workforce. That hence why the uh, the emblem or logo for communism is the hammered sickle because um, it's those are the modes of production is both agrarian and uh, also industrial uh, development so there was that and that was uh, having to do with the, the homidor that this, this is what I'm talking about um so there was a push from people who uh, were put into the fields to farm and there was an implementation of what is called Lysenkoism. Um, I will put a, a little blurb there um, for you to look at um, in this video. Uh, Lysenko was a, a Soviet scientist, a biologist, if you will, and he basically tried to um, apply a, 
a Soviet doctrine to science, which is basically like you implement this like one method across the board and it's supposed to work because we will it so. That's kind of the ethos behind it. Um, and actually we'll notice that sort of phrasing later on as well. Um, basically it's the um, mass application of a particular science which always goes wrong like it's never ever gone right and we actually somewhat see this sort of implementation of what happened with the uh, the co the coof lo lockdowns um they tried to implement this sort of method um to uh you know stop the curve i remember hearing that all the time which it didn't really seem to actually do anything and it put entire like our entire economy on standstill and the thing is is that especially with something like economics like it never it never actually was a standstill it was actually slowly deteriorating and then that sort of ramped up from there it starts slow and then it goes much quicker so there's that and then there's also the um the re-education camps or gulags um, basically it was, uh, a lot of really pointless labor. They were, uh, people were sent in droves to Siberia under like horrid, horrid conditions. Like it would be, um, impossibly cold people having to dig, um, fields in the winter with their bare hands, no tools. And to the point of which people are basically losing their fingertips and their feet, uh, due to frostbite. And people were dying in uh, countless numbers uh, with this pointless labor. Um, so that's uh, another thing. Um, there's also a part of that was the deportation of the kulaks, which kulaks is basically a form of slang for people who, I guess if you're to put Marxist terminology to it, they were like the bourgeoisie and basically it was landowners. That's what it was. Um, so there was that. Um, there was the uh, Hungarian revolution that took place with uh, George Lukács. Um, I will also put a little thing for uh, that happening as well. He was actually a Hungarian Marxist, which recognized that if they were to create a generation of revolutionaries, Marxists and activists, basically, they would have to start destabilizing youth like while they're young. And by which the way that he was looking to do that was to uh, sexualize children. And I'm just going to leave this comment on that is that we see something pretty egregiously similar going on in our schooling system right now that we have particular individuals dressing up rather inappropriately in uh, children's classrooms and frolicking about as if we're not supposed to be overly concerned about the subject matter that's being taught about and sort of the destabilizing measures of what they're talking about so there's that um then uh last but not least there is also the chinese cultural revolution and also the great leap forward um a part of the chinese cultural revolution is a brief uh breakdown there is the destruction of the the five olds Basically, um, the communists were trying to destroy any sort of tradition or history for people to latch themselves onto and to basically um, there would be no points of resistance, that there would be a sort of a utopian vision that would be implemented at everyone's peril. Like, <laughs> they're trying to create the heavenly conditions that were um for earth which um i mean is sort of outlandish at its initial proposition but um they uh are gnostic oriented so that uh that much is uh certain and there is actually videos that you can uh look up on this sort of subject as well how marxism is 
uh, basically a modern application of Gnosticism and by which it executes itself, it's actually hermetic. Um, so there's, there's that. Now, I think it's really important to recognize that the, the Great Leap Forward, um, I'll be putting a link for that uh, event that happened in history. It is the greatest like famine, human-induced famine that's ever happened like in the whole, whole course of history. And the purpose behind the Great Leap Forward was there's supposed to be a mass implementation of turning agrarian in the society and also um, diverting uh, many resources into creating um, steel. Um, Mao recognized that in order to um, develop uh, them into an, more of an industrial age, they needed to hyper-focus on people getting fed and also the sort of building of a greater uh, inner network. Now, the thing is, is that virtually nobody was um, like trained to do what they were doing and they were forced to do so. So they were creating incredibly shoddy metals that were not even usable. So it was worthless. Um, the labor was pointless. And the same was roughly this um, went for uh, the agrarian measures that they're trying to implement as well with uh, the production of wheat. And so basically the workers would, um, it, it, it just wouldn't work. They're digging their seeds um, way too deep in the fields because they thought that it would uh, leave more room uh, to grow more plants. And they planted them really close together, which is also a really bad idea. Um, which resulted in really poor crop yields and they ended up actually not getting anywhere remotely close to the figures that Mao was projecting. And basically the, the peasants, they were lying about their yields because they knew if they truthfully uh, revealed their yields, then they probably would have been killed. That or something worse. So... They didn't truthfully uh, go off from from there. Now, I also want to say too that there is a measure of um, communist-based societies. They're actually like I w I would say that they're actually essentially eugenicists. That's the word I'm looking for. They're essentially eugenicists, um, and why I say that is that. Basically, they are looking for a specific um, ideological aim, and they're uh, willing to do, uh, that is the communists, are basically willing to do anything to make that happen, including uh, influencing uh, milieu factors and biological factors to make that happen. And we actually see that in China, where they're trying to... Uh, perform that genocide of the uh, Uyghur people. Um, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Um, they live in the Zhejiang region, which is in the west of China, I believe. China is absolutely ginormous and has many regions. Um, these were uh, considered almost like separate uh, states like within China, like many generations ago. And with China trying to unify itself under one banner and to maximize production in hegemony, uh, that is them basically wiping out, uh, I would say, indirect dissenters. I think that the, the Uyghur people were mostly trying to live about their own life. But to a communist, if you're not a communist, then, well, it's not good enough for you just to go about your own thing. You have to be a part of the vision or you're annihilated. That's basically the gist of it. And that's why I actually draw so much attention uh, to this phenomenon that this uh, communist takeover that we're undergoing in the West, that we're undergoing a severe cultural revolution, that this is going to get 
much uglier than it needs to unless we actually uh, stand up against it now because this is not going to get any easier and the longer that we wait to resist it it's going to get harder to push back and that's when it will get even uglier than we can possibly imagine now I really don't want to say that these sorts of events that I've been articulating on would happen in like the modern era and what we know, but there is nothing indicating uh, to me that we're not like that we're averting that. I think that we're perfectly capable of doing these things uh, again and on our own turf. Um, and I think that to try and dismiss it and moralize it away is one of the worst ways of going about it. I think that we need to uh, almost have a form of acceptance that we are capable of doing these things, even if we've done nothing remotely close to it in our life. But if uh, I've learned anything from uh, Jordan Peterson is that it is the common person who commits the worst of atrocities and it's um, one of those things where like while figures like Stalin and Hitler, Lenin, all these figures, they were incredibly evil people, obviously, that much is certain. Um, There's also a great degree of evil that was also executed by the people under the ideological doctrine as well. And those people, I... Uh, <laughs> I don't think that they, like before all these atrocities happened, that were thinking, yeah, I would love to get up in the next like few weeks and just go about doing these horrible things to other people um, and trembling on their like freedoms and their life in general. So I am going to go into more uh, detail about uh, on my next episode, because I don't want to dredge this out too long, um, detailing out what exactly is communism, because that is not a simple question. There's a great de degree of detail behind it, so I'd like to be able to flesh that out uh, some more. Um, I would like to talk about the Great Leap Forward in more detail as well. I have notes on that as well. Um, I would... Uh, sort of like to rearticulate, um, I guess in a summarized form, um, sort of like Mark, like Marx's theory in a shell. And cause there is, um, a lot of things to bear in mind when it comes to Marxism as for like how we thought the stages of history would play out, uh, the terminology that is commonly used, uh, within it, um, how they how Marxists go about getting what they want, um, and sort of like when you see a particular set of things happening within a society, it is pretty safe to say that there is a degree of creeping concepts that are coming in that basically like communism sweeps any sort of like democratic ruling from under its feet. And we've seen this actually in China before the communists um, came in and they overthrew the government. I uh, am uh, really hoping that we don't have a form of like communist um, militants that are <laughs> waiting to storm our capital. And I don't think that they would anyway, because we have a very like woke uh, prime minister to begin with. So I don't really see why they would do that. Um, possibly if Pierre was were to be elected next year, maybe there would be a weird like faction that would emerge from the uh, <laughs> from the shadows in that sense. but um, we're not gonna go into that today, but this is uh, sort of part one of the, uh, anti-communist education program that I'm looking to implement here. I'm going to try and um, put timestamps uh, just for 
uh, convenience purposes, if people needed to look back and sort of uh, touch base on sort of uh, something that I've said earlier, or if something intrigued you and you wanted to be able to um, just look back on that, because this is something that I've been looking into for the last few years. And I started to realize like, what use is all this information if it's not shared? And I think that goes for most things. Um, but this especially, um, I think that we really need to be able to talk about this now before anything like further happens. Um, so now uh, in closing uh, for this video, I uh, would like to ask the second question. Um, is there anything that uh, you would like to see going forward in these videos or something that you would like for me to talk about? Because I am more than receptive to your feedback. I would like to touch base on things that interest you as well. So um, if you'd like to leave a comment of that uh, down in the, <laughs> the comments below, I would uh, love to read that and uh, just pay mind to uh, what you guys think as well. So uh, thank you so much for watching today. And um, I really hope you guys have a good day. And please look out for one another, your friends and family. These times are not going to get any easier. And I really hope that you're taking care of one another. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a good day. Take care.